one of our three deceivers once made a nemesis in college. You can tell us who you think it is by voting along in the chat. Let's find out who's telling the truth and who is a chump. Yeah! Welcome, 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 welcome to Chump, everybody. The Rooster Teeth Game Show, all about lying and deception. I'm your host, Jeremy Dooley, and thank you to today's sponsors, Bespoke Post and Express VPN. Like I said at the top of the show, one of our three deceivers once made a nemesis in college. Is that deceiver number one, Chris Damaris? Please welcome Chris. There he is. Look at that beautiful guy. Is it deceiver number two, Sam Mitchell? Please welcome Sam. There's the man. Or is it special guest deceiver number three, Chef Mike Harris? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, only two people can sort out whether or not they are telling the truth or lying. The first being today's contestant, the returning Jack Patillo, everyone's favorite Hello. contestant. Look at that guy. And the other person, yeah, I know. It's a weak one. <laughs> the other person sussing all of this out is you, the audience playing along at home, which is anyone because RT Live is free for everybody right now. You don't have to be a first member. And uh, so you can vote with hashtags in the chat. We'll explain that a little later. Thanks for joining, guys. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Yeah, of course. RT's uh, 17th anniversary. So we did this special, special episode. Jeff Mike, where are you calling in from right now? From my basement with like uh, eighth grade equipment <laughs> compared to all your stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we do work in a large production company, I think. Yeah, you do that. You know, I'm building my repertoire of equipment. I'm working on it. It's very yeah, well right, lit for yeah. a basement. Thank you. It is. Yeah, the lighting looks that's good. A, that's a $25 ring light and stand for my cell phone. Hey, you know, whatever works, whatever works, dude. So um, we're going to start things off with a twist on a very popular game. And uh, we call this game, What's in Your House? So uh, you might be familiar with the game, What's in the Box? Which is where someone has a bizarre item in their box. The other two are making up items in their box. We switch that around. So one of our three deceivers has a bizarre item in their house. Uh, they're going to be explaining this item to Jack. You can question them up to my discretion when I tell them to move on. Uh, the other two are making up items that don't really exist. Audience, you're voting on who has the real item by using hashtags in the chat on Rooster Teeth. Uh, you can use hashtag Sam, hashtag Chris, or hashtag Chef Mike. Uh, so here's the thing with the chat. There's a lot of people voting. You each get one vote, but you can change it at any point. So if you really think it's Sam... Posting Sam five times isn't going to do anything. You just post it once, your vote, is, your vote is cast, but if you think it's Chris later on, you can change it to Chris. So one vote, you can change at any point. You just don't want people breaking the chat. <laughs> uh, all right, so without further ado, we're going to start hearing people's items. We're going to start with Sam. So Sam, what is in your house? Okay, so I got a big preface on this one because it's very... Oh, God. Uh, kind of not okay, but I guess also okay. So I didn't buy this. I don't know if I technically own this. A friend left this in my car and it's found its way into my closet because I was supposed well, to give it back story, to him. Tell the whole story, Sam. Just what is it? <laughs> it is a like a it's a Pride version from Pride Day of like a clan hat, like clan with a K. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> Pride version of a clan hat. Um, Chef Mike, what is in yes. your house? So I've had it for actually quite a while, but I have a functioning pair of night vision goggles that work and they're awesome. All right, functioning night vision goggles. And Chris, what is in your house? I have a uh, fingernail from my best friend in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Jack. <laughs> So Jack, I was, by the way, I was taking notes, and then, <laughs> of course, fi uh, fingernail. I hate the president I've set with this jacket because it's hot as hell in this room. <laughs> uh, all right, Jack, you can start with whoever you want to start with. Who you want to question first? Oh my God. Um, I mean, I guess we got to find out more about this freaking fingernail. 
Yeah, do we? Okay. From, from Chris, uh, I mean, <laughs> just for 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 insurance purposes, probably it's probably not a bad idea. When the cops come, right. we'll have all the information. Uh, so it's not Jack, as weird as it sounds. I bet it is, Jack. You can start your questioning whenever you'd like, and I'll tell you when to move on. So all go right. ahead and question, question Chris. All right, Chris. What was this friend's name? Uh, his name's Justin. Justin. What's his last name? Lori. Okay. And so, uh, wh where did you guys go to middle school? We went to uh, Jetson Middle School in Longview, Texas. And so, uh, what? Wh how did you end up with a fingernail of his? What other so, security question can you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, like a lot of people in eighth grade around that time, we would do Jackass videos for fun because Jackass was like, you know, the thing that CKY. Um, and so we were doing stupid stuff. We'd, uh, uh, I found this old tire tractor, um, and I convinced my friend, it would be a good idea for us to go down a hill in this tire tractor. Uh, I did it and it was fine. I just got really dizzy. My friend did it and he like freaked out and stuck his hand outside of of the tire tractor to try and slow it down, which was a mistake. You don't slow down a, a tire tractor when you're going down a hill and you're you keep inside. Saying of it. Tire tractor. Uh, I think you're meaning tractor tire. <laughs> tractor tire tire. Yes. <laughs> the, other way around. <laughs> the tire for a tractor. Uh yeah. And uh and so he stuck his hand out to try and slow it down and then it wobbled and then it like f came over and he toppled over and then landed on his finger and then smushed his finger really bad and eventually it turned you know gross and his fingernail fell off and he was mad at me but it was also like an inside joke where he kept like putting it in my like like around my house so i would like open up a book and i would see his fingernail it was like an inside joke kind of thing uh and and it was one of those things where, and then i would stick it in something of his and blah 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 it was this gross inside joke and then I ended up uh, with it and I still have it because it was just like a thing that like we had all through high school and it's just like ended up in like a fucking box. All right. And so this happened in the seventh grade. That's uh, pretty no, wild. Eighth grade. Okay. Eighth grade. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I know. What else to ask about that? Uh, um, yeah. So why have you kept it? over all of these years like you know a normal human would have thrown that away well it was like a it was like a thing that we kept like putting in each other like hiding in each other's uh stuff as a joke and then i ended up with it and i was like gonna keep it for the like the long con and whenever i you know <laughs> and that uh and then put it in something um like and surprise them but i keep forgetting to do it when every time i like see him or or uh, I mean, or he comes to Austin or whatever. So it's just been in a box for, I mean, since then. Oh God. Since, since all right, all right, all right, school. all right, Jack. Hey, Jeremy, I, please I'm cut cutting me off. this off now. Please I'm cutting you. this off now. Uh, okay, Jack. <laughs> so you got Sam, you got Chef Mike. Who do you want to go to next? Um, we'll go to Chef Mike. Chef Mike with his night vision goggles, I believe it was. Right. Jack, whenever you're ready, go ahead. All right, Chef Mike, you got these night vision goggles. What brand are they? Um, I don't even know if they're really a brand. They're not like military grade or anything, but they are functioning and they do work. Okay, what what color are they? Uh, they are black, uh, like most night vision goggles, I would assume. You, you would assume? Okay. Um, well, so you want night vision how... goggles? You don't want to. Uh, you don't want to have like bright orange night vision goggles because people would then see you. Like Sam I mean, Fisher. The night vision goggles. The night vision goggles in Jurassic Park were uh, for brown and green. So, um, oh. so what, where, how did you get these night vision goggles? Um, so I acquired them as a. Uh, you know how when you buy a video game and you could spend all that extra money to get a cool thing. Well, this is a yeah. cool thing that came with a video game. And what video game was that? Modern Warfare 2 back in the day. Nice. Okay. Ooh, uh, remastered so now. You've had them, yeah, remastered just came out. Um, so how, you've had these for a while then. Yeah. I, what? I don't remember when the game came, like 2008, maybe? Seven? Mm, <laughs> maybe later? Okay. I don't know. Um, and so is, have you used them for anything at all? Like, do they actually work? 
they absolutely work and there's two modes there's regular mode where you could see the little red dots in the front but there's stealth mode which reduces your vision by half but you don't see any red light in the front <laughs> they're pretty awesome they are legit right, jack. jack i'm gonna cut you off there let's right. move on let's move on to all sam right. all right so sam uh so how did you end up with a kkk mask that's pride themed uh i was the designated driver on pride last year and uh yeah so i had a friend that was part of the parade and that was their whole gang shtick i think it was i think it was a qqq which i think was queers questioning in queens i think but okay. yeah they were in pride i was a designated driver for a couple friends and he left his hood in my car which yeah <laughs> that's not, that. I mean, not that's keep that yeah it's like american history q um so yeah. uh <laughs> god we, uh, so okay so you were a designated driver and so was he the only person who had one of these or was there a bunch of them uh i was the designated driver for like two people so my girlfriend at the time and her friend were just out there like you know as not participants just as like i guess audience i don't know is that what you say for the they were watching the parade right and then yeah my one friend phil was in the parade okay okay and so where where was this parade at sixth street Okay, so it was here in Austin. Yeah, it's here huh? in Austin, yeah. Yeah, I can okay, get one more Brad question. All right. Uh, and so um, how long have you been friends with this person? Uh, met him when actually at a blockbuster when Halo 2 came out. So that would be about 16 or 17 years. Okay. okay. Damn. All right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so there's all your questioning. Yeah, I had to s speed up because I, I realized that we were spending a lot of time hearing about the fingernail because I was just blown away. <laughs> yeah. Come on. All right. You know? Yeah, uh, that's more, more than anything. I was horrified by that. So, uh, right. chat, this is your last chance to change any answers if you want it. So, uh, Jack, just kind of after hearing these, is there anyone you just don't believe at all or, like, don't want to believe? All right, so there's one person telling the truth, right? One person telling the truth. The other two are lying. Okay. I, I love Chef Mike. Um, the night vision goggles were an included special collector's edition thing for one of the Call of Duties. It was not Modern Warfare 2, though. It was Whoa. it was something much, much further down the line. It was, it was like Battle like Battlefield 4 or something. But that is a real thing. Not for Call of Duty, though. Like wow, Modern Jack. Warfare 2, though, I think. Uh, so I'm, I'm, okay. I'm eliminating Chef Mike. Um, okay. wow. That's my thought process there. Just realize that that leaves a rainbow KKK hat and a fingernail. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I just want Which, oh, to, yeah, yeah. And so, so that's, all right, that, that's the yeah. tough thing. See, Chris was saying uh, tire. What was he saying? He was saying tire truck, or he was saying something backwards right. the whole tire time. Tire tractor. Tire yeah. tractor. <laughs> the wheel of a Which, of a tractor. I lived out in the country. And no, I, I understand what you're got trying it, to say, <laughs> but I'm thinking like <laughs> you, you were saying it, you like your brain was trying to come up with, with something faster. And I'm thinking maybe you tripped yourself up. Oh, all right. So I think we see but where that, you're leaning. That's just how uh, my brain works, Jack. But I, well, I mean, how, how would we ever know what your brain works? Um, and the, the thing with Sam with the, the, the clan hood, that sounds like something that would exist in Austin, but damn. Why would he have it? Place, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't ask him. I didn't ask him why he have it. Has it still? Um, that All was right, my so mistake. So before we get your final answer, though, audience, you are now officially locked in. You cannot change your answers anymore. Um, so your answer is now set in stone. So Jack, now we need to set your answer in stone. Uh, <sighs> and who is it going to be? Who has the actual item in their house? Oh, man, this is this is a this is a coin flip, dude. Because um, Chris would absolutely have a fingernail for some reason. But I'm gonna go with Sam. I'm gonna go with Sam and the and the the, the Rainbow Clan hood. You locking that in? I'm I'm locking that in. All right, Sam is locked in as having the item in his house. Audience, let's see who you locked in as having the item in their house. Ooh, oh, wow. very close. Forty four percent went against Jack and thought Chef Mike. So we have a split here. So there's two points up for grabs. The deceivers if they fool both. Jack and the audience. Uh, and rather than have me reveal who actually has the item, we're just going to have them hold up their items. So one person will hold up an item. The other two will hold up nothing. Don't, so on three, don't hold up a fingernail. Hold up your don't item. hold up a fingernail. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, three. Hold up your items. Oh, Modern Warfare 2. Look, it says it right What's on that? it. 
What? Damn it. Black. I got my dates <laughs> off. Look at that. Yes. I, I knew it was a thing. There I didn't realize it was that far that long I ago. Love how believable that fingernail was. <laughs> you look that cool, was a great dude. story. You that look like you're story. from He Man. Um, you. So, you know, that being said, yeah, Jack got it wrong. Uh, thought it was yeah. Sam. Sam got the fool on. And audience, you got it right. You sussed out that uh, Chef Mike had some night vision goggles in <laughs> Google his Google searched it, whatever. Well, all right, hang on. Uh, so that means that at the end of that round, the audience gets a point and the deceivers get a point, uh, which means that Jack is the current chump. This episode of Chump is brought to you by Bespoke Post. If your mailbox is anything like mine, 90% of the time, it's full of junk. Flyers, utility bills, unholy amounts of coupons that you never end up using. But once a month, I do have a reason to be stoked. And that's because of my box of awesome from Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post sends guys only the best stuff every month. And no matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From styling grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. I got my box of awesome. I had a Damascus steel blade in there. It is really great. I use it in Abu all the times. And I take it camping with me because uh, you never know when you're going to need a really good knife on hand. And uh, it's a really great one to have. Excellent quality. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code CHUMP. You can enter that right at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code CHUMP at checkout for 20% off your first box. Trust me, you won't regret it. But if there was ever a game that was going to change all of that... It's going to be our next game where a lot of points are up for grabs, and it's called Pushing the Envelope. I got a bunch of envelopes right here. And uh, if you thought our budget was low before, look at those. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to do it in orange, but the orange was really old and looked like brown, and it just was not appealing. Uh, so each of these envelopes contains a true fact about our deceivers. One fact for each of them. I'm going to shuffle them up and then read a fact to each deceiver. That is now their story. So it could be theirs or it could be someone else's. Either way, Jack is going to question them for 60 seconds about that story. And either they just tell the truth and answer his questions or they make up lies about this thing that never really happened to them. It happened to someone else. Uh, Jack, at the end of the game, just has to tell me who's telling the truth and who's lying. Uh, if he gets two or more correct, he gets some points, uh, depending on how many he gets right, and then vice versa, the receivers get points. Audience, you work a bit differently, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So I'm going to shuffle these up and then tell people what their facts are. So Sam, here is the true story about you. The true story about Sam Mitchell is that he played poker full time during his last semester of college. Mm -hmm. His last semester of college, full-time professional poker player. Uh, here is the true fact for Chef Mike. Chef Mike once made a nemesis in college. So Chef Mike had a nemesis in college. And then here's the true fact for Chris Damaris. Chris, in college, there's a theme here, once led around 100 people while dressed as a ninja turtle. Uh, so there we go. There are true facts about people, and we'll, and we'll read them off again as, uh, as you question them. But uh, audience, what you are telling us is simply who actually had a nemesis in college. So one of them actually had a nemesis in college. Uh, it is claimed to be Chef Mike, but who do you think it is? Is it Chef Mike? Is it Sam? Is it Chris? Vote in the chat, and same thing goes. You can change it at any point. But don't spam the same name, please, and thank you. Uh, Jack, who would you like to start with? Um, we'll start with Sam Mitchell this time. Starting All with right. uh, Sam Mitchell, who his last semester in college played poker uh, professionally. So, Jack, you All get right. 60 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? 
I'll give it a shot. All right, 60 seconds on the clock. Ready, set, go. All right, where were you going to college when you were playing poker full time? University of North Texas. University of North Texas. What's the University of North Texas mascot? Uh, it's an eagle. Uh, is it? Yeah, with a claw. Okay. Like we had this All right. Thing. Yeah. With a claw. How, how, how are you? Okay. <laughs> well, where, where, where were you playing poker? What were you playing full time? What you? Sorry, Texas Hold'em. Where, where were you, you? No, where were you playing? Were you playing in a, oh, in a casino? Yeah, online. Okay. What? Uh, we started so out while... going to the like casinos in Oklahoma, like Windstar and Choctaw and stuff. But then the ante gets really shitty, so you would do the weird online ones. Okay. What's the best hand in poker? What's the best hand in poker? Like in Texas yes. Hold'em, I mean, it's it's pocket aces. Like, I don't think there's a way oh, around what's that. The, what's the best winning hand? What's the nut hand? Uh, I could not tell you anymore. It has been well over a decade. Oh. All right. All okay. I remember is um, you don't play a 3-7 split. That's out here. <laughs> All right. So there you go. There's your questions for Sam about his professional poker yeah. career. Uh, who do you want to go to next, Jack? Um, I'll see here. Let's go to Chef Mike. All right, we're going to Chef Mike next. Um, Chef Mike once had a nemesis in college, is his fact. Uh, so Jack, you're going to be asking about this nemesis. Uh, you ready? I'm ready. All right, 60 seconds on the clock. Ready? Get set. Go. Chef Mike, who was this nemesis in your college? My roommate, my freshman year named Aiden. Aiden. So how did he become your nemesis? So uh, there was four people in the room. He was one of them. We were all like good buddies. And then he joined a fraternity. And then weird stuff started happening. Like he'd come in with his boys all late at night. Doing all who knows what. Stuff was missing from our dorm room. Uh, all my video games and movies got stolen. He was never around. We couldn't even question him about it. So then we started to try to like snoop on him to see what he was up to. Okay, and you caught him doing something, obviously? We didn't catch him with our stuff, but I will just say he is not the greatest person on the planet, and I look forward to never seeing him or talking to him ever again. Would, would he consider you his nemesis? No, I don't think he'd even, like, because he didn't care about us, so he would just mess with our stuff and it wouldn't matter, so I don't think he would care. Okay. All right, so hmm. there's Chef Mike's nemesis, Aiden. Uh, all right, so we've heard two of the stories. That just leaves Chris Damaris, uh, whose true fact was he once led 100 people while dressed as a Ninja Turtle. Uh, Jack, good luck with Chris again. Um, <laughs> You're throwing so, me in there with him again? I'm just kind of throwing you into the pit, and we'll see what happens. Great, uh, great. We're going to put 60 seconds on the clock to question Chris. Ready, get set, go. Chris, how did you end up leading around 100 people dressed as a Ninja Turtle. Short, well, give me two sentences. <laughs> Halloween party uh, and, a, and a particular song by Vanilla Ice came on. What, which song by Vanilla Ice? Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what are the four turtles' names? Michael, Leonardo, Raphael, and Donatello. Michael. Okay. <laughs> Michael An Michelangelo. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, who, who's the reporter that follows him around? April O'Neil. And who's the hockey mask uh, playing dude? Uh, Jace, uh, fucking Jace, Jace, uh, Jason. No, not Jason. Jason Bourne? No. Jason doesn't wear <laughs> right. a hockey mask. So why did you dress up like, like a Ninja Jones. Turtle? Davy Jones. Uh, I was Davy dressed Jones, up as a Ninja that's it. Yeah. I no, was okay, dressed why? up as a Ninja Turtle. Well, it was Halloween party. And, I, and then the song came on and I started chanting and we circled around the house singing and dancing and it was a whole big old thing. Uh, Jack, just because remembering the name Davy Jones took so long, do you want another question? <laughs> Davy Jones. Um, God, uh, were, were you sober at the time? It was, it was a Halloween party in college now. <laughs> <laughs> you better not be. All right, All right so... All right. Uh, there it is, people. Um, audience, this is your last chance to uh, change any votes around. You're just telling us simply who actually had a nemesis in college. So we heard the story from Chef Mike. Is that a true story or is that true about Sam or true about Chris? Uh, Jack, while they get their votes in, is there anyone you just straight up don't believe at all? Man, this sucks. <laughs> so... <laughs>
I know Sam knows poker. I know Sam plays poker. When we were doing the testing for my show, he played poker and he was good at it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if he was. I also won live and... at RTX last time too. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I don't know if he's I've always being... told you I've played poker before. That's not a fucking lie. Like I, I know, right, but the on. fact you couldn't, the fact you didn't know what the best hand. Oh, in okay. Poker I was. didn't know you meant like a royal flush, like the full hand. I thought you meant like in the pocket. So I was confused. But now I think you just okay. mean royal flush. Like, because okay. it's like pocket aces okay. is like always like where you, of course, you're gonna go as hard as you can on pocket aces. But technically, like some people like. What is it, the ace-king split because of the, like, flush and straight? All right, so. poker champion. We're going to cut you yeah. off right here before you get more and then, information. And Okay, yeah. And also, North North yeah, Texas right. is, is the mean green now. It's not 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 the Eagles anymore, so. Now? Now. Uh, hey, wait, when the fuck right, did I, they change? Uh, like, I don't know. Not with, Within the last 20 years, I think. All right, you um, Texans. Audience, let's lock in your answer. Your answer is now locked in. You cannot change it anymore on who had a nemesis in college. All right, so Jack, we're going to start with Sam as well. You just have to tell me if he's telling the truth or if he's lying. He played poker professionally in his last semester of college. If he's if he's playing online, he knew he knew the casinos around. So I, I I'm going to say yes with Sam. I'm going to say yes. Sam played poker full time his last semester of college. I believe. So you him. think Sam's telling the truth? You're locking it in. I'm, I'm locking that one in. Sam's locked in as a truth teller, a filthy truth teller. Uh, that uh, onto Chef Mike, who had a nemesis in college. Did Chef Mike have a nemesis in college? See, I see. I don't know if he, his definition of nemesis is the correct. When you say nemesis, that's someone no, who you know. I hate him. You with all of my heart. So <laughs> oh, yeah. hang on, hang on. And I'm a nice Go person. Ahead, but I don't. I don't know if that means nemesis though. I, I there's people I don't like, but I don't know if I'd call them a nemesis. It's like it's a I don't know. He, term. Mm. <laughs> but see, I could see I could see Chris having a nemesis. Because if one of them's lying, the other one's lying. Right. So basically what you say for and this I, one determines what you say for the next one. I wish I knew if Chef Mike had hair in college. That would be that would be <laughs> the people key with nemesis only have hair. Yeah. No, no, because I think he would be a ninja turtle if he didn't have hair. In college, oh, oh interesting. I get it. Because of the balls. Oh, I get it. Yeah, that's good. That's funny. That's what I, so I'm. You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a shot. I'm gonna say he's lying. I'm saying you're lying. All right, Chef Mike. Sounds like you're locking it in. Lock it in. All right, Chef Mike's locked in as a liar, which means uh, mathematically, you're locking in Chris as a liar. I could see is Chris that... having a nemesis. I could. I could see Chris somehow stumbling into a nemesis kind of situation. And absolutely, <laughs> absolutely having someone that, you know, dreads All seeing right, him. So I don't mathematically, know. Mathematically, <laughs> uh, people do hate me. It's, it's, <laughs> Chris Tavares is locked in as a liar. In, yeah. All right. Because, yeah, if you got one liar, you, you have to have two liars. Um, okay. And audience, let's see who you thought actually had Nemesis. Oh, my Chris. Okay. Okay. People hate me. Chris Damaris. <laughs> People hate me. All right. Uh, audience thinks that Chris, and the audience gets it right, that's a, that's a two-pointer for them. Okay, so starting with Sam, we're going to go down the line. You thought Sam was telling the truth. I can reveal that Sam was telling a lie. Sam was lying about his poker in but college. But I do obviously have a good poker face, I guess. So Yeah, yeah you do. You got a great poker. You're a great oh. liar. Uh, on to Chef Mike who claimed he had a nemesis in college. Jack, you thought he was lying. I can reveal that Chef Mike was telling a lie. You got that one right, Jack. You nailed it. Chef yeah. Mike was indeed lying about his nemesis. Uh, so this determines it right is, now. Yeah. Yeah, if Chris, is, if Chris is lying, you get points. If he's not, they get points. It's only one point, but still. Um, all right, so that's Chris Damaris, who claimed to have led 100 people while dressed as a Ninja Turtle. Uh, you thought he was lying. I can reveal that Chris was telling the truth. Chris was telling an actual story. So got that one wrong, Jack, unfortunately. I knew I was uh, screwed as soon as I realized he would have had to have been telling the truth about being a full-time poker player. And I'm like, nope, that's not happening. Yeah. So, <laughs> Right, yeah. And uh, since the audience <laughs> thought that Chris was the one uh, with the nemesis, and we know that he was Ninja Turtle, audience, he got that one wrong, unfortunately. The person with a nemesis uh, was Sam. Sam Mitchell had the nemesis in college and Chef Mike played poker professionally. 
So uh, we are going to hear more about the nemesis, the actual nemesis, and the poker playing uh, in our post-show, Chump Change, which you got to be a first member to watch that. Um, but yeah, we get into a little more depth on these true stories that we missed out on. So at the end of that round, uh, the Deceivers get one point for that. So there were a lot of points up for grabs, but only one went to the Deceivers. Uh, so that means that right now, Deceivers have two points. Audience has one. Jack has none. This episode of Chump is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Okay, so we all know how ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security online, right? But here's something you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Now that so many of us are stuck at home, it's only a matter of time until you run out of stuff to watch on Netflix. It's going to happen eventually. That's when you can use ExpressVPN to binge something on UK Netflix. It's so simple to do. Just fire up the ExpressVPN app, change your location to the UK, and that's it. See, ExpressVPN hides your IP address and lets you control where you want the sites to think you're located. You can choose from almost 100 different countries. So just think about all the Netflix libraries you can go through. Hopefully you speak a lot of languages. But it's not just Netflix. ExpressVPN works with any streaming service. Hulu, BBC Player, YouTube, you name it. ExpressVPN is also compatible with all your devices. I use VPNs to watch uh, some BBC shows every now and again. Big Fat Quiz of the Year, stuff like that. Love it. I can only watch those live using a VPN, like ExpressVPN. Um, if you visit the special link right now at expressvpn.com slash chump, you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Support the show, watch what you want, and protect yourself with ExpressVPN at expressvpn.com slash chump. Thank you, everybody. Get safe and get watching content. So we're Ugh. moving on to our last game right here, uh, which is called Just the Facts. So, uh, Deceivers, you're sitting pretty good right now. Um, but, you know, if, if you don't fool anybody in this round, it's going to be a tie all around. Oh, well, not really. Jack will still lose. Jack, if you tie <laughs> in, we'll decide what happened. Uh, okay. So, in just the facts, we got one true fact about one of our deceivers, but all three of them are claiming that fact is about them. Jack will get to question them up to my discretion whenever I tell them tell him to move on. Um, and they just have to answer his questions about the story. One's answering the questions truthfully. The other two are just making it up as they go along. Uh, audience, you're voting on who the story is actually about using hashtag Sam, hashtag Chris, and hashtag Chef Mike in the chat, and the same voting rules apply. Uh, all right, and so the actual, and I, I gotta make sure I say this one right, <laughs> the fact that they're all defending is that one of them and a friend once good cop, bad copped, an actual cop. So they played good cop, bad cop with an actual cop. Um, so that is the true fact about one of them, but Jack has to determine which one of them that actually is. Good cop and bad copped, an actual cop. Um, so Jack, you get to question them to my discretion. Who do you want to start with? Uh, we'll start with we'll start with Chef Mike. Starting in the middle with Chef Mike. All right. Um, whenever you're ready, you can start questioning the man, and I'll tell you when to move on. Good luck, Jack. All right. Chef Mike, were you the good cop or the bad cop? Uh, I was the good cop, actually. Okay. And what, what was the situation that you were in that you had to be the good cop? So I was in a band right after uh, college, and I went to Kohl's with my bandmate because I have no style and I'm a suburban dad. And even at that time, I just can't dress myself. Um, so I always wear Kohl's stuff into the Kohl's store. And the, um, the employees accused me of trying to steal a bunch of clothing. And I was like, no, I came in with it wearing it. And my buddy just started flipping out on them. The police get called. I'm still being accused. Uh, we trying to convince the cop to like look at footage or something uh, to prove that I walked in with what I was wearing. And he was just like, no, this is, you know, I d don't want to deal with all this stuff. And uh, so my buddy just berated this guy to say like, you don't have any proof. This is bull crap. And uh, I obviously didn't get arrested, but uh, it was definitely a, a whole ordeal. So. And so did your buddy get arrested? No, he did not. He was close. Uh, and it would have been arrested for, like, just mis disorderly conduct and 
swearing in the middle of a Coles, you know, men's department, <laughs> but it's pretty, uh, what it was, was pretty legendary. What, what was the name of your band? Uh, From the Broken was back in the day. From mm. the Broken, okay. From the Broken. Um, and where, where was this at? Uh, this was in Schaumburg, uh, at a Coles in Schaumburg. <laughs> All right, all right, Sean, Jack. Yeah. We're gonna have you okay. move on to someone else now. Uh, who do you want to question next? It's a very, very Coles heavy on that one. It's a very uh, Coles heavy one. one. Let's go Sam, to Sam next. Okay, uh, Sam Mitchell. Uh, good luck with the questioning, Jack. I'll tell you when to move on. Go ahead. All right, Sam, you lying liar. Uh, were you the good cop or the bad cop? <laughs> bad cop. You were the bad cop. What was the situation yeah. you were in? Uh, we were pulled over for, you know, the flimsy excuse when you have the taillight out on your license plate. And, uh, honestly, they were just stereotyping us because we looked like young stoners. We were about 18, 19. Okay. And where, where did this happen? Uh, didn't Texas, just north of Dallas. Same place. Okay. And the University of North Texas is at. Crazy, right? <laughs> hey, crazy. <laughs> so, um, so your taillight was out. Uh, and, and so why, why did you, why did you light up into the cop? What happened? Sorry, what? So you, you were the bad cop. So why were you why were yeah. you the bad cop in this situation? Oh, okay, so the guy comes up. I'm in the passenger seat. I wasn't driving. My friend John's driving. The guy comes up, and he is general asshole demeanor of, like, a very power-hungry police officer. Knocks on the window all aggressive. We roll him down. He's like, what are you guys out doing tonight? And it was like, you know, accuses us of being high and having drugs in the car. And uh, we were very confident that he was not going to find anything in the car. Uh, so we just were like, fuck it, let's lean into this. And I was being an asshole to him. Cause I was just like, wanted to go home and do, we're not doing anything fucking illegal. So like go away. And I was smoking a cigarette and he got really pissed off. Cause I blew the smoke into his face when he came up. That was kind oh of an accident. God, was, yeah, no. <laughs> and we, wow. we, we didn't turn down the music or anything like that. And so this guy is just pretty much just like, Hey, and then, so he pulls my friend out of the car. He's like, why are you guys have like, why are your eyes bloodshot? All this bullshit. It's just like, well, I'm smoking cigarettes in a car driving with the windows down 60 miles an hour. Like, our eyes are a little red. And I'm like, what? My eyes are just red. And my friend gets pulled out of the car. I see him show him this ID. And I'm like, what is he doing out there? It turns out it was his, like, medical allergies ID. And so he's like, yeah, I have allergies. It's going to happen. By the end of the day, it was great. It took, like, 30 minutes. He just kept coming to me. And I was like, look, I'm not going to talk to you. And he's like, can I search the cars? Like, it's not my car. I don't give a shit what you do and like all this stuff. And yeah, at the end of the day, he apologized, shook her hands and let us go. I love how they full screen Sam. They're like, you let Sam yeah. off the chain and just like full screen him. <laughs> I mean, all right, one more question to be fair, for him. It was, you know, I was uh, young. I had like the long yeah. ass fucking hippie hair and all that shit. So yeah. Jack, wow. any um, other questions for him? You get one more. I'll give it to you. He, he fleshed out that story quite a bit. Um, he did. Are you, are you still friends with the driver? Yeah, of course. Of course. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, I love <laughs> I that. I feel like five like, friends I've had in my whole life. Literally, I met this I kid playing was, Goldeneye. Still know him. You were the nice. asshole in the passenger seat. I love that. Like, the guy driving yeah. the car would be like, yeah, let's just get out this. And the passenger's like, yeah. fuck you. Well, what is he uh, going to do? All right. Like, that, we, you know. <laughs> that leaves Chris. Uh, so, Chris, good cop, bad cop, and actual cop. Uh, Jack, whenever you're ready. Go for Chris Tavares. All right, Chris, were you the good cop or the bad cop in this situation? I was the good cop. Okay, and so what, what was the situation that you had to be a good cop with an actual cop? So uh, it was West Campus in college. Uh, again, uh, college party. We were leaving um, uh, underage drinking, um, which you shouldn't do, but we d were, and uh, we had alcohol with us. The cop stops us and is you know gonna give us it presumably an mip my friend like flips out and is like oh my god like you can't believe you're you know there's people doing the blah 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 and then he was like calling the cop racist and and uh all this uh, like just like playing just going crazy on the cop uh and all then right. how, did, how did how did you defuse the situation so i was like i was like I played the good cop. Where I was like, "Hey, look, I don't think he's, you know, I don't think he's racist. I think it's just that." I was like, "Officer, we're really sorry. We'll throw, you know, we'll here, we'll get rid of the alcohol." And you know, like I was like, "There's th like, they, you know, I know you're just doing your job." Uh, and then, and good then line. my, then my, do what? I said, "Good line. You're just doing yeah. your job. You know, just doing your job." 
And then my uh, my friend was like, yeah, and he shouldn't even be arresting us. There's people smoking meth around the corner. And I was like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> just doing his job, you know, like officer, sorry, you know, you know, we're just going to, we're walking home. We didn't drive. Uh, and I'm sorry about my friend. Okay. <laughs> right, Jack, okay. one more question to Chris. I'll give you one more. Uh, what, what time of night was this? Uh, I mean, it's probably a ra- after two. I don't oh, know. Wow. I mean, it was, co- it was a college party. So, uh, I don't really know. Were you and a Ninja like Turtle? A- okay. No, not this time. <laughs> And you got you got up completely clean, like he didn't he didn't give you anything at all. Yeah, he, he was like the meth smokers are over there. No, um, <laughs> sold out the no, meth he, heads. Look yeah, no, we all just right. uh, we just we just he, we threw out the alcohol that we had. Is okay. what happened. All right, Jack. So there you go. There are your stories. Audience, last chance to change any votes if you want to do it. Hashtag Sam. Hashtag Chris. Hashtag Chef Mike in the chat to uh, get some last second changes in there. But if you're happy with your choice, you're good. You're done. Uh, Jack, what are you thinking here, man? Man, these guys are some good liars. Um, they're really good. Yeah. So, I mean, Chef Mike's story about going to a Coles is like the like the most white story I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and look at me, I'm a bald white guy from the suburbs of Chicago. It's it, it plays. Yeah, and I the, the idea of uh, yeah, actually going off like flipping out at a at a, at a cop at a Coles like. That one's that one's tough for me to believe. Um, that okay. that one it seems like there's bits of that story, elements of the story that are true, but I don't think that's the case. Uh, so I'm gonna say no to Chef Mike, um, which is probably gonna be my downfall again. Um, Sam's story is that's a quality story because uh, I I like I, I could I could see that happening. I mean North, North Texas kind of sucks. Some of the cops are there a little bit weird. Um, and I, I could see that happening, but the thing, the thing that I got that got me with Chris is, is that cops on the West Campus at UT, that's here in the University of Texas, like they're just looking to write tickets, and if they see a minor with alcohol, I can't imagine they would just let that person walk. Oh, even, interesting. And, okay. That that, but but the but the problem is, he said it was after two, which means there's going to be a flood. Well, no, it wouldn't be West Campus. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he's lying. I, I can't oh, imagine a cop just letting that go. So right, I think we know which way you're leaning. So before we get so, your final answer, yeah. Um, yeah. And chat, let's lock you in. Get you locked oh, in. I'm chat, sorry, you're done. You... You're shut down. All right. Uh, I thought you already locked in, okay. chat. Yeah, chat's locked in. Okay, now, Jack, we can get your official answer. It's it's gonna be a mistake. He's gonna fool me again, but I think it's uh, I think it's Sam. I gotta lock in Sam. I think it's Sam. Sam is notoriously a great liar. All right, we've locked in Sam. Let's uh, lock him in. That's why we brought him back for this one. We're like, special episode? Get Sam in here. I Sam's see someone chat saying, as, Chris is as a Chicagoan, I don't believe Chef Mike, so. <laughs> Dang! <laughs> Dang! They're like, there's no Coles here. Uh, audience, Dude, I love what did you I got think? that cold patch with a coupon, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chat, what did you think? Audience, you locked in Sam okay. as well at 56%. Oh. All right, there was, uh, there was some agreeing going on here. Okay. So uh, I can reveal that the person who actually good copped and bad copped an actual cop was Sam Mitchell. Jack, you got it right. Yay! You nailed it. Where it was great. I, I got to say it to you, an audience. Nice, Jack. Uh, audience, you also got it correct. Yeah, as soon as Sam was telling his story, as soon as he said he was the bad cop, I watched so many comments <laughs> come up like, yeah, like, Yep, Sam would do it. I saw <laughs> yeah, one we'll say that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw one say Sam would do it, but the question is, did he do it? <laughs> 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 Which I love. Um, so that All means right. that the audience gets a point and the contestant gets a point. Uh, which means that the audience has two points and the deceivers have two points. They're tied in first place. Jack, unfortunately, though, uh, you needed the audience to not get that one right in order to tie them which means uh, for the special 17th anniversary or Rooster Teeth 17th anniversary episode of Chump, Jack is going to be tonight's... Oh, there it is. <laughs> it, got a, it got a little cut off, but we got it in there. Um, so thank you, everybody, for tuning in for this episode. Uh, thanks for bearing with us while we figured out a bunch of technical things uh, with the self-isolation. Hopefully you're staying safe and uh, everyone you know is staying safe as well being smart about this whole thing uh 
Thank you to our first members. You guys make this stuff possible. And you also get to watch Chump Change, which is our uh, post show. So we're going to record that right after this and talk about all the true stories that we didn't get to hear during this. And also what some people were thinking, like with fingernails and stuff. Um, and uh, that's going to be it. We're doing live content all the time here on Rooster Teeth Live. So make sure to check it out every day to see what new content we have because it's free for everybody right now. Thanks again. 17% off we'll in the see- store. 17%, 17% off in the store right now. Yeah, site-wide through April 5th. So do that. And uh, Chump Season 2 returns in May. So uh, we'll see you for more episodes then. Thank you, everybody. You guys have yourselves a good night. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye, people. Thank you again for watching, guys. I hope you had fun. Let us know in the comments who ended up fooling you. And we'll make sure to see you on the next episode. Make sure to uh, subscribe, click like, Make sure to click the bell to get notified. We'll see you next episode, everybody.